I am Sebastian. This is a continuation of the topic which we began in the earlier video where we have been discussing about uh, uh, protein trafficking to a particular location in a cell. In this video, let us focus on how proteins are trafficked towards or into a nucleus. In order to understand this particular mechanism, we need to look at the structure of nucleus. So, in the nucleus, as you know, uh, we can say that, okay, let me create a little space. In the nucleus, we'll have, uh, it is continuation with the endoplasmic reticulum. If the membrane is continuous with the endoplasmic reticulum, so it can be represented this way. So, this is going to be our nucleus. Uh, this is the outer membrane and this is going to be the, okay, we'll continue. This is going to be the inner membrane, this is the outer membrane and this is continuous with the endoplasmic reticulum and this is our nucleus, okay. Now, uh, this is what you call it in the nucleopore, this is nucleopore, uh, inner membrane and outer membrane and inner membrane and outer membrane are uh, phospholipid bilayers. In a cell, you will find only three such organelles which has got phospholipid bilayers and nucleus is one such organelle. And in the thickness is about, in each of these, about 6 to 7 nanometer is the thickness. And here also you can see a space. This is the, uh, the, the space between the inner membrane and the outer membrane. This space now this space is see that it is continuation with the endoplasmic reticulum that is the interesting part and that space occupies roughly about 20 to 40 nanometer is the the space the thickness or the or the space here uh, we have been talking about the nucleopore nucleopore is uh, is is a kind of a perforator structure you can very well imagine in the drum of a washing machine. So it has a perforator structure for the water to go out. So it's exactly it is like that. So therefore, if you put this kind of a cup, so you will find plenty of perforated nucleopore. Each of these is a nucleopore. Um, now, in the, we'll come to the nucleopore. Before that, in the outer membrane and inner membrane has a lot of proteins. And there are several common proteins and there are several proteins which are unique to inner membrane as well as to the outer membrane. Now the inner membrane has got very specific proteins uh, for binding to uh, lamella. Now uh, lamins, so therefore this has got a lot of uh, lamins, in fact lamins will be spread the entire nucleus it will be spread inside and the lamin will give a kind of a, a nuclear lamin will give a kind of a shape to the nucleus um, when we come back to the nucleopore every nucleus is supposed to have roughly about 3000 to 4000 nucleopore 3000 to 4000 nucleopore and each nucleopore uh, is, is an assembly of proteins and its molecular weight is somewhere around 112 into 10 raised to the power 6 Dalton. That is the molecular weight of this uh, nucleopore. And the diameter is about 120 nanometer is the diameter of uh, the, the entire uh, the nucleopore. When you look very closely at the nucleopore, if the nucleopore has a, a kind of proteins, uh, we'll rub this, kind of proteins, um, it is called the nucleoproteins. Now, uh, in the nucleoproteins, it forms a kind of a symmetrical structure, which means if you consider this is the outer membrane and this is the inner membrane and this is where the nucleopore is forming a part of it will be projected on either side part will be projected part is projected here and part is projected here and it is a symmetrical molecule um, this nucleopore has a 
kind of an octagonal structure. But with the arrangement of protein, it has an octagonal structure. Now the question is, um, will the nuclear pore allow any molecule to diffuse? If the answer is yes, it allows several molecules to come inside. But then, if the molecular weight as well as if the size matters, it can allow small molecules and a, a study was carried out. What the scientists have done is they have uh, uh, chemically attached gold particles of different size, gold particles of different size to uh, polyvinyl pyloridine. And then it is injected or it is injected into a cell cytoplasm to see whether these gold particles have been taken inside. So, for example, you know, you have a, a gold particle of 2 nanometer, let's say 9 nanometer or 50 nanometer. So, different nanometers were constructed. What is observed is up to 9 nanometer it allows and beyond 9 nanometer it is not allowing. In, in other words, nuclear pore allows up to 9 nanometer size to pass through and other molecules are not allowed. So these are the pain-taking studies that they carry out in order to understand the structure of the nucleo, nucleopores. Now, if the nucleopores has got, uh, it, it, the protein structure, it's very interesting to look at the protein structure of the nucleopores. If the proteins are, it's a kind of an alpha domains. Alpha domains. And it forms a kind of coiled, coil structure. So we have elaborately looked at the coil coil structure in one of the videos. So it forms a kind of a coil coil structure and that is in the nucleopores. And uh, in the nucleopores, um, in these proteins, it has uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, phenylalanine and glycine that is repeated number of times. Phenylalanine and glycine are repeated. Now, this repetition, phenylalanine, we know it is denoted as F, glycine is denoted as G, one letter code of amino acid, and these are called nucleoporins. FG nucleoporins. FG nucleoporins, the short form you will find in many books, the short form is FG noops. Okay? FG noops is a short form that is used for FG nucleoporins. And this FG nucleoporin, keep track of it. Uh, these are very, very important for allowing molecules to transport. The kind of theories that are proposed about the transportation of molecules where this FG noops are so essential. So this is the basic structure of a, a, a nucleus that we need to keep in mind in order to understand how proteins are transported to the nucleus.